What's going on everybody? Broken Games HDR back at it again with another video. So there's a rumor that a highly acclaimed Xbox game or Xbox exclusive will go multi-platform this year. Now initially when I saw this story get reported, I'm thinking like, oh that's not a, that's not a big story, there's no need to make a video on it, um, who cares? And then I saw the reactions to it and I'm like, oh shit, a lot of people care. A lot of people are not exactly happy with this and there's been a lot of reaction to it. So when I saw the the reactions that I saw, I'm like, okay, this is the I found the reactions more interesting than the story itself. Um, because for me, regardless of what game this is, I don't care because I would have bought it already. Whatever game it is, if I was interested in it, if I cared about it, I bought it, played it, and beat it already. Uh, so this, to me personally, it doesn't matter which game is going multi-plat. Um, this story has evolved into, the rumor has evolved into, it's going to be Hi-Fi Rush uh, going to Nintendo Switch. Um, and one of the most interesting reactions I saw was from Clobril, which I'm going to talk about. And Clobril, I think a lot of people follow him. You know, a lot of people know who he is. He's like a diehard Xbox fan. Um, not even fanboy because I've never seen him even relatively really participate in, in the console war and argue and go back and forth and talk shit about like an engaging console war type stuff. In my view, what I've seen, he, he only cares about the Xbox ecosystem and Xbox doing better and the games. I don't think he think he cares about anything else other than the, the betterment of Xbox. And he's just a passion fan. Um, so the article states uh, that according to Nate the Hates podcast, a show that often breaks stories involving the video game industry, um, a acclaimed Xbox game is going to be going multi-plat. The show did not name the title um, that is allegedly, com allegedly coming to other platforms, but noted that it was in the game of the year conversation. Um, it says in the calendar year of 2024, Microsoft will bring one of their more acclaimed first-party games to a competitor's system. Um, the title I'm referring to was met with high critical acclaim. Fans loved it, and it was in the Game of the Year conversation. Uh, when the announcement comes, I think it will be met with a lot of excitement because it's a quality game. I think this is a smart move from Microsoft from a business perspective. If you're bringing select games to, plat to multi-platform, to Switch and PlayStation, you're doing so because you see the quality of the IP and the franchise and want to expand uh, expand it beyond its reach of Xbox. Um, and then, like I said, that evolved into it being a Hi-Fi Rush to Nintendo Switch. Um, another user on Reset Era um, suggested that the game would be Hi-Fi Rush. Um, so... If it's Hi-Fi Rush, I definitely don't care. Not that I, I don't think Hi-Fi Rush is a bad game, but it's not a game. I played it, wasn't really for me. You know, I'm not really crazy about the, and I know you can play, you can technically play the game without going by, you know, the rhythm commands and all that stuff. But, you know, ryth, rhythmic combat games is not really my thing. I played it for a little bit, it wasn't my thing. Um, so, like I said, either way, I, w I wouldn't care. So... The reaction to this is is interesting, and I'm going to read Clobril's reply. Um, PlayStation fans are like, oh, you know, uh, one of your games is going multi-plat, you know, and that's because Microsoft is going third party and, you know, all their games are going to go multi-plat. It was that conversation. And from some Xbox fans, some didn't care. Some are like they shouldn't be doing this and all that stuff. And that's, you know, um, that's somewhat similar to Clove Burrell's reply. Um, and this, this has always been a conflict going on within Microsoft and the Xbox division with, you know, you, you can never really guarantee anything it, to be exclusive. That's why it's always like a conversation. You know, that's, that's why the conversation always comes up whenever, whenever almost anything is announced. It's like, oh, is it going to be actually exclusive uh, to Xbox or it's going gonna, it's gonna to be on PC, but is it going to other platforms also? And I think a lot of fans are just tired of that even being a question, tired of something, uh, tired of that being something that you have to ask and you can't be, uh, you can't even be sure of. Listen, Phil Spencer and Satya Nadella have made it very clear and gone, gone on record that they are not a fan of exclusives. And I've talked about this in the past, 
there's a conflict. You know, there's a there's a dua- duality um, between you know um, whoever is the exec at Microsoft making the, these decisions because you know there's been some movement you know with Phil Spencer and Sarah Bond and you know whoever between them and um, I think there was another person because they put they hired somebody else uh, under Sarah Bond you know but amongst all these executives who make these decisions. The sentiment does seem to be that they are against exclusives. And, you know, they go by the philosophy of breaking down barriers of where people can play, putting things everywhere. So they have a like a, they have a conflict and somewhat of an, an identity, identity crisis of we want you to play. We want you to subscribe, subscribe to Game Pass. We want you to play in our ecosystem, but we also don't like exclusives. and. That's going to continue being a conflict, right? Because exclusives are what gives a, a, a console and a platform its identity. So if you put it in anywhere, it kind of loses its identity. It, it loses, it's, it's, it's a, loses its allure. And a lot of fans are not necessarily uh, going to be happy about that. Um, because, yeah, it, it's it's... Them, them, like Phil Spencer and them not liking exclusives is is more of a personal thing, a personal philosophy that that kind of spills over I- into the business. But the but the business side knows that exclusives. The business side is kind of conflicted too because it knows exclusives are very important to the brand. They know that, but at the same time, business wise, it makes sense to put these games other places too because. It'll reach a bigger audience. It'll uh, it'll make more money. And Xbox fans, one thing I think that we we have to acknowledge: the Xbox fan base is not the largest, is not the the biggest fan base out there. If you want, if you want the most people to play your game, putting it exclusively on Xbox is not the decision you make. Let's can can we just be real real about that without anybody getting offended? Out of the big three, Sony. Nintendo, Xbox, they have the smallest, the smallest fan base. They have the smallest user base. That's, that's just a fact. We, we know that. Um, even with Game Pass, and, and that's why you know, they're trying to grow Game Pass through PC, and even though I think it's very strange they're not trying to grow it through uh, selling consoles and on the Xbox ecosystem itself, and consoles not, even if you don't care about necessarily console sales, Every console you sell is a potential Game Pass subscriber. So it's very strange. There's no push on the console and, you know, the console uh, side of things. That's still very strange. So even with Game Pass, that's not enough of an audience. You're, you're still leaving so much of an audience out there off, off the table, even if you're pushing on PC. Because I've said this before, the PC audience is, is, is very particular. Right. If you're if if you're <laughs> let me tell you right now, this is my, if, if, if your strategy is to, OK. You know, consoles, the, the console market is only this big, so we're going to try to sell to PC. I'm telling you that PC audience is so fickle, is so particular. Some these dudes, some a lot of the times don't even want to download a, a, another launcher. So if you're if that's the audience you're trying to sell and massively grow Game Pass, I don't think that's going to work. I do not think that that's going to work at all. The the most guaranteed customer is your customer, which is Xbox customers, not PC. There is some, you know, um you know, and so, some on some are on both, of course, but and, you know, there is some overlap, but but the obvious customer is the Xbox customer. That just makes logical sense. They are the ones most likely to buy a subscription subscription because they care about and they are invested deeply into the ecosystem. So. And just to touch on that conversation, you know, the whole conversation between Sony and, and, and Xbox's strategy real quick, n- both have their issues. Both of them have issues that they need to figure out with Sony. We know they have like this whole issue with, uh, you know, budget and being more profitable and margins and all that stuff. That is a clear issue. Nobody denies they need to figure out. 
but a lot of these Xbox fans think that the subscription service is this all-encompassing savior and answer when it is not. Solely making your, your success be you know, hinged upon Game Pass is, is not the answer either. Based on those leaked uh, you know, targets of, of Game Pass subscribers that, th that they want, yeah, and they're far behind, I wouldn't say that's, that's the answer. Um, because I think a lot of people, a lot of, a lot of Xbox fans are conflating the success of Microsoft with the success of Xbox. If we are being real, Xbox is currently doing well in spite of Xbox. It's not, Xbox is, Xbox is not thriving or starting to thrive right now because of Xbox. Xbox is starting to, to strive right now in spite of Xbox and because of Microsoft. It wasn't like the Xbox brand was doing so well that, that Microsoft was like so inspired. Oh, we need, to, we need to drive more funding into the Xbox division. No, it was, it was oh, we need, we're about to actually shut this shit down anyway until you know, the story goes that Phil Spencer convinced Satya, oh, we need to invest more in this brand and, and actually push it, put some money behind it. So it was in spite of the Xbox brand. And some people conflate those two. And that's very dangerous to do because then you start believing all oh, the Xbox brand is doing so well on its own. And the Xbox and then the gaming division is so strong on its own. Eh, it's not necessarily true. It's because Microsoft is the much richer company. So they are able to do, uh, you know, go, go with a certain strategy that's different from PlayStations, which is fine. Neither one is wrong. It's when, it's when these, these fans who think that they are CFOs and know all the money and how the money moves within these companies think one is the right way to go when both can work for each company respectively. So just wanted to say that neither, both, both philosophies and both strategies have their challenges that they are currently facing. So people acting like one is just the, the, the solidified answer and the right way to go, even though the, when you look at the, the market and, 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 and the landscape, it does point to currently point to one more than the other, but some say the future is one. Either way, whatever. Getting to my whole point in, in saying all of that was it's not exactly shocking based on what they've said on record and based on the Xbox, uh, you know, audience that some of these games probably didn't get the attention uh, and, and, and the players that and the numbers and the metrics and all that stuff that Xbox and Microsoft wanted. So they may put it on other platforms. Y yeah. I don't imagine, even in Game Pass, that if it is Hi-Fi Rush, that Hi-Fi Rush got crazy numbers. I'm sorry. I, I, don't think, I don't think it did. I don't know that for sure. And that's the thing I don't like, you know, with these companies not reporting their numbers. We're always left in speculation and just our thoughts. But do I, do I think Hi-Fi Rush did some crazy n numbers or, you know, just, just even in Game Pass? No, I, I don't. Um, that's just that's just my thought. Do I think it would be better on a plat do better on a platform like Nintendo? Absolutely. There there are certain games that I believe do that do better on certain platforms. And some people get offended by this when I don't know and I don't know why. It's it's not a it's not like a console war thing. It's that we know each uh, each fan base has their certain proclivities and the certain um, type of games and genres that they lean to. So, like when I when Final Fantasy fourteen was announced to be coming to Xbox, I said, "Listen, y'all not playing that." Most people on Xbox are not even going to touch that, and a lot of people got offended. Like, "Oh, why are you mad? It's coming to." I'm not mad at all. I just know what each fan base is going to play. And that is not a game that I think is going to be wildly successful and a whole lot of people are going to play on Xbox. There's certain games on that if you put on, um, put on Nintendo, I don't think nobody's going to play it either. There's certain games that if you put on PlayStation, like look at Dreams. I bring up Dreams all the time. I say nobody's going to play that on PlayStation. 
when it was coming out. And guess what? Nobody played it on PlayStation. You know what, what platform that game would be successful on? PC. Even more, e even more so than PlayStation, PC and Nintendo. So I just know, I, I believe I know what these fan bases, what they tend to like. So that's, that's my point. I don't think a, a game like Hi-Fi Rush was like, oh, I get it. The, the hardcore, the hardcore liked it, not denying that. But was it, was it wildly popular by the masses on, on Game Pass? I don't, I don't think so. I, I don't think so. I think it would be more, more popular and, and see more success and more players on Nintendo Switch than it ever did on Xbox, possibly even in Game Pass. I, I think they would actually like it, buy it, and beat it on Nintendo Switch more than more than they would on on on, on Xbox. Because that's that's the type of game like platformer. It's it's vibrant. It's colorful. Uh, music like that's that's literally the, the the shit that Nintendo fans feed off of. That is their lane. So I think yeah, it makes sense to put it on there. Um, and let me let me go to uh, Clobro's res response to this right because. Longer video, but um, turned into an interesting conversation. So Clobro posted this on, this might be Reset Era, one of those forums. Um, so he says, no one is saying you have to share or care for the concerns Xbox fans have. That's totally fine. But there are logical reasons not everyone is happy with this decision. And that nothing has to do, and that has nothing to do with the plastic box uh, or console wars or whatever. I'm tired of reading this. If you think this is about the console, you don't understand anything. A brand and investment and ecosystem is defined by its games, by its library. And the movement and the moment you bring experiences to competitors, you'll give up a bit of that identity, potentially piece by piece. You'll actively take away value, reasons to get into the ecosystem in the first place. From here, it snowballs. He's right. It could start with one game and, and go to more. And that could be what Xbox plans. I don't know. You take away reasons to get into the ecosystem. Your eco ecosystem po uh, potentially shrinks. Your ecosystem potentially receives less third-party support. And suddenly you as an Xbox gamer are directly affected uh, by these decisions. You'll ignite discussions when first-party game XY is coming to the competition. You'll, you'll inevitably hurt the value of your own brand, such as moves directly contradict uh, moves directly contradicted some of your statements as a company made in the past, some of what has already been happening today. But it's, but it's awesome more players get to play Hi-Fi Rush. Again, you seem to fail uh, to understand that what the concern's about. Of, cor of course, more, more players playing more games is awesome. Anyone would agree with this. What kind of argument is that? It would also be aw uh, awesome if more players got to play Hell Divers, Splatoon, God of War, or Mario. That's an obvious non-statement um, applicable to every game, big or small. But there are good reasons none of these games are on Xbox. The point is, this is a one-way one -way street. You won't see Nintendo or Sony experiences on an Xbox device or service, period. You cannibalize something uh, that is unique to Xbox for more sales. Yes, you can get more money for the short term. But you'll lose other values, which cannot easily be attached to numbers. He said there's too many cooks in the kitchen at Xbox, and Xbox wants to cook everywhere these days. He's going in. Um, but I think you, you get the point. He's not happy with this decision because it's stripping the, the brand of Xbox of, of its identity. And I do think he is, is right. And it lends to the, you know... You know, some some weirdos still try to argue that everything should be on every platform. I think you're an idiot if you think that that ex that exclusives sh should be extinct and you know exterminated. I think you're a moron if if you think that. Only a few, I think, only a few minority actually believe in that um, in in that sentiment anyway. Um, but I don't I don't disagree with anything he's saying here. Really, um, I probably wouldn't be so. Uh, passionate about it, so torn up about it, I guess. Uh, especially since we don't know what game it is, and um, yeah, I, I don't know. I do agree that it could be a, a slippery slope, though. And um, but I, I, at the same time, I feel like people shouldn't be surprised. Like, like I said, Game Pass is not this 
you know, th this ultimate this decision, this ultimate um, answer to get more people to play your game. It's 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 not. Uh, it's 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 still like a, a barrier. It's still a barrier itself. Um, and <laughs> because you're growing Game Pass, but you're not necessarily necessarily growing your fan base. I think that I think those are two different things. So when you, I think he has a point. So, so you're potentially losing your fan base and your ecosystem, and you're shrinking. You're shrinking all to sacrifice everything to. Uh, game passes growth and 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 the growth of your profits and everything like that and i don't know man i i, I don't know it's it's x xbox's like i said xbox's success is, has not been in the, in the gaming division like people make it out to be it's not even their most important division sony moves like they moves because their gaming division is their most important division it everything hinges upon the success of gaming and playstation that's why they're still trying to sell uh you know consoles they're still trying to sell everything hardware peripherals software all that stuff they treat it like that there's a dip there's a definitely a difference in approach with how microsoft treats you know selling stuff and you know the xbox and gaming and how sony and playstation do it once again not necessarily saying one is wrong one is right but they clearly have different uh, philosophies. And I think in, as an Xbox fan, they've made it very clear to them. Everything is the ecosystem to them. Everything is an ecosystem. And any anything, see, he's talking about the Xbox e ecosystem, but they look at it like, listen, anything we put our games on is the Xbox ecosystem, damn near. TVs, a, a radio, a phone, PC, uh, a calculator, everything is part of that Xbox ecosystem. It doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Um, and listen, man, I, I, I think he has reason to to be upset. Um, and I, I think uh, you know, in, in a few years, I think a few years will reveal a lot um, about both companies' uh, strategies and what ends up. What ends up being, I guess, the sustainable word, what ends up being more sustainable, what ends up working out. And listen, a a Xbox, Microsoft could subsidize, like Microsoft could subsidize Game Pass forever. They say it's successful. OK, and I take them at their word that it's, it's successful and all that stuff. Um, but for if they want to get the more expensive games, you know, price hikes are going to come and, you know, targets are going to be more lofty and everything like that. It's going to become, you know, more challenges. Like I said, both of them got their challenges um, in front of them. Uh, but the, the last thing I'll say is him saying there's too many cooks in the kitchen at Xbox. There is a lot of conflicting statements, a lot of contradictions. Oh, exclusives. Oh, here are some exclusives. No, exclusives are bad. Um, this game, you know, oh, no, this, this, this game... Uh, it's exclusive to, to Xbox. Oh, it's going multi-plat and all this stuff. And we, oh, we want to be everywhere. We want to be on every platform. You know, it's, I think it is very confusing to the, uh, to the Xbox fan base, which i which I think a lot of them are feeling kind of jilted and disrespected, uh, a little bit, but y'all are, you know, they're doing better than before, you know, as far as like the games roadmaps and stuff like that. So that's good. Um, Currently, they are, you know, as far as their roadmap goes, it's better than PlayStation's, which is uh, virtually none. Um, I would warn, I would warn uh, Xbox fans that be very, very careful about how froggy you get about this, uh, about the current, about, you know, Xbox current state, that they're doing well, because we've seen this before. Sony is not necessarily in the best place, especially when it comes to announcements like these. This year looks like it's going to be dry. Last year is going to look. Last year was definitely very dry. A two-year drought is insane. Is wild. It's unacceptable. But I would say be careful because when you look at history, when when PlayStation has gotten quiet and when they get towards the end of, end of the generation, they drop some some shit that is unparalleled, that nobody else matches. 
So y'all are excited and talking a lot of shit now, but I would say be careful. And Microsoft, you know, and Xbox may have some things that can relatively match what PlayStation makes or kind of compete. But it may not be on the same level if we go based on history. I'm just saying. That's just history. I'm just saying. Much longer video than I anticipated um, out of a story that I did not care about at all. But there it is. Let me know what y'all think. Hit the like button. Let me know what you, uh, yeah, let me know what you think about whatever this game is going multiplat. Is this that big of a deal? You know, is it, is it overblown? Is, is it a bit of hyperbole, a little, uh, you know, dramatic reaction from the fans? It could be. Um, it could be. We'll, we'll see. But if it starts out with Hi-Fi Rush and then it ends up with something else, then I would definitely say their, their worries were valid. So follow me on Twitter. Uh, Hit the like button, hit the notification bell, all that good stuff. And uh, I will catch you all on the next video. I'm out. Peace.